Reggae interviews. Word sounds power. This is DJ745 for Reggae Interviews with Toots and the Matals. His contribution into the development of Jamaican music has been truly phenomenal. To say that he is a pioneer is an understatement, yet almost six decades on, he continues to grace us with his rich, soulful vocals. How are we doing today? I'm doing quite all right. Nice to have you here at the Reggae Centre to have a talk with me. This is where all the musical magic is happening right now, Reggae Center. Right now, yes, that's on my yard. Okay. My yard. <laughs> and my little studio over there. Okay, okay. Now, Toots, I, I feel as though you've been through it all. We've gone through the Scar eras, the rock steady, the reggae. You know, you've been touring, putting smiles on hundreds, thousands of people's faces across the world. How do you feel about being able to do that? I feel good about it because... Um, I'm still alive and I'm going strong and um, for me to meet the people it's a good thing for me and all my audience so I will be always doing this and doing something conscious pertaining to reggae music mm. mm -hmm. Is there anywhere in the world that has a really special bond as far as you are concerned you know when someone's you know proposes a tour for you and with the band is there a place that really puts a bright smile on your face well as you know Jamaica first and um, always be London is my hometown actually <laughs> <laughs> if I if I'm not, if, if I'm not living in Jamaica I will be living in, in London really okay. and then in Europe okay. really I love um, love the vibes of the people so the, uh, that's one of my favorites, Jamaica and Europe. Europe. Okay. Do you think you'd be able to manage the cold weather extremes that we have in Europe, though, in the winter months? I did it all the time. Okay. Did it all the time, and it was good. Because mm. the mu reggae music keep you warm. Right, okay. okay. Yes. Now, we're really excited about your forthcoming album, which is entitled Got To Be Tough. Let's focus a little bit on that particular project. I believe that that was an album that has been put together with Trojan Jamaica, which is a newly formed label. Yeah, the album put together from Reggae Center with the company um, Jamaican Tour Trojan. They also engulf in this uh, the song, these songs that I have. So we, I'm the one who put it together so they could listen to it and, and, and put what they are putting together and make it be a good album, good album. called It Got To Be Tough. Right, okay. Now, the partners within Trojan Jamaica, I believe is a Zach Starkey and also a Shana Shligers. Tell us about those yeah. two people. Well, those people, uh, I, I, I knew them because of my music, they engulf in it and they come and uh, we meet each other and it's two great people. Um, Zachary, I call him Zachary. Okay. <laughs> Zachary is a, is a great musician. It's coming from his father and his whole family and he stuck on to, he's a great drummer too. And um, I heard, I heard that he's a great drummer. Mm. I never really seen him play drum, but to what I heard, He's a great guy, and um, the lady, number one too. Number yeah, one yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like you see you have a very special bond working together with them. I know that you signed with their label for this project back in October 2019. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because all my musicians, they're happy to, to do what I do. <clears throat> do I play a lot of these instruments because I am the creator for good words and lyrics and everything and music. I create my own music and to, uh, the most of the time I, I, I play uh, in the studio with my old band, old band. But sometimes I just do it, do it by myself mm. and, and they engulf in it and, you know, I share the name with all of my musicians. Um, though they have a special name, but when I'm on stage, everybody said Toots and the Metals. 
So I shared the name with everybody. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, you first collaborated with Trojan Jamaica in 2019 on one of their debut projects, the Red, Gold, Green and Blue project, which was like a, a various artist album where artists like yourselves were covering blues songs and you actually covered a Fleetwood Mac song, um, Man of the World. Yeah, it was a great song and I did uh, have to do something with it. The words are salam and good and, you know, it makes more than sense. Mm. It makes wisdom, knowledge and understanding. That's why I did it, because it's, I like to, to sing good songs, good words in my song. Mm -hmm. And on that particular album, there was also some of, some of your friends in the music circle, um, people like Freddie McGregor, Big Youth, Michael mm -hmm. Rose, just to name a few of the people. Yeah, man, all of these people, all of these great, great Jamaican singers, they are my friends. So we just come like a family. <clears throat> We're more than friends, like family. Mm. From Bob Marley go right up, his kids, right back, come back to all of these great people. Um, great, I, I, I did not even try to call a name because there's <laughs> so many names I would have to call. You know, so. True, true, true. But they are my friends. Mm. Well, look, let's focus a little bit onto the new album, Got To Be Tough. It's your first album in quite a while. Right, because uh keep touring, <clears throat> I, 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 I go all over the world and um, my last tour in the world was uh, at Singapore and um, because, I've, because I keep touring um, then I decided not to put out no, any album right now, no, no music at all mm. um, until I met um, Zachary and he said, yeah man, I like these songs and also get in touch with my lawyer which is Roderick Gordon and you know and Zachary Lawyer and Jeffrey and uh, Wayne Jobson, a lot of great people. people. Sly and Sly and myself, Nigel is my engineer and everybody said it's gonna be good. Mm -hmm. So we gotta make sure it got to be tough, you know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, I'm, when I've heard the title track, I really love some of the guitar work on it. Mm -hmm. And I love the message, you know, you're talking about things like friendships, mm -hmm. the hardships, the shorter days. What is the message that you're trying to portray with that song, Got To Be Tough? Well, you know, it got to be tough and believe in what you do. Believe in yourself, believe in what you do and believe in God. And believe in God Almighty, Rastafari. And then... Everything will be coming true very quickly because the time is running out, you know, so we have to hurry up and do what we have to do, to do. And, and do it well. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. mm. So my message for all my friends and family is to believe in what you do and um, do all the good you can and then make sure that you believe in yourself. Mm. Yeah. And I guess that some of the subjects, the topics that you're talking about on that single, Got To Be Tough, are based on own, own self-experiences over the years. Yes, you can say that. Though is um, the single that I did, I, I never really, I just regulated, but I never really write it. But uh, the album is, is my year. Mm. Mm -hmm. and people have to have some understanding towards the music because a lot of music is not so not, not so good and word is not saying great but the city goes along but in the, in this album people will learn some knowledge from the words of my song mm, mm. and then you other, other songs that are on this brand new album um a song like warning warning well, who did you have in mind when you were actually writing warning warning well, it was early in the morning. I wake up three o'clock, everybody. <laughs> oh. And um, the, the vibes comes along. Pick up my guitar, go in the bathroom, and I start to create some things. And, and daylight out, Nigel come down, and we just put it together. Right, okay, okay. 
and all of the tracks that were recorded here at Reggae Centre. Yeah, Reggae Centre, yes. Yeah. Okay. It's recorded here. Mm -hmm. One of the other songs on the um, forthcoming album includes Struggle. It has a very, very funky sort of beat, funky rhythm, mm -hmm. um, but there's a, still an underlying serious message behind that song. Um, you're urging people to stop the fighting, the shootings. Mm -hmm. And killing. Because it's necessary for us, no? Yes, it's necessary for us to, to be aware of things that can happen and then if you don't talk about it you have to write about it or sing about it so i just sing about it mm -hmm. within all of the songs you know the the gospel influences within your vocal tone and range they're still there from you know i sort of look back to some of your very very early works and it's still there your voice really hasn't changed to me yeah, so you have to know that it's from um, 1964 I started and I started from in the church with my parents and then come right back up, right back to this time from Calypso, Rastaman, Vibration, Congress, then you have you have ska, ska music, very fast and energy, and then you have rock steady, very slow and easy, and then you have reggae, which is, from that time come right back, I put myself together and say I have to do the music, I have to treat people well with my words in my song, so that's what keep me going on like this, I have that thing coming from the church mm. Mm. one of my spiritual vibes you know spiritual vibes it's from the church, church. Mm. one of my favorite songs on the album is drop off head it to me it seems as though it's a song of upliftment self-empowerment don't let the enemies get you down is what you right. sing yeah because some of the words said well drop off your head drop on the ground <laughs> <laughs> you see so it, it makes sense to to make sure that you tell people the right thing in the song, you know. And um, don't call crimson and clover because as you treat 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 you high, it will be over. So it's a it's a thing we have to do very quickly, mm. very quickly. Think quickly, do quickly because the time is running out, and it's running out all over the world. You will see a lot of strange things, very strange things that happen nowadays, and things is, time is running out. So, you know, what job have your head? You know, may fall on your shoulder too, but you mm. really jump on the ground, guys coming from way on your head. Mm, mm. So, it give you more understanding towards the album. So some people call it jump off head, <laughs> but someone like you say chop off head, okay. but it's the, but drop off your head, fall on the ground. So Toots, it seems like you had a lot of fun putting this album together. Um, I can just tell from the passion within your voice about how excited you are. Yes, I'm very excited about it, because it's a long time, you could say, I haven't released an album, so. Very excited, huh? mm -hmm. and to work with BMG and and all my friends up there and all over here. It's very excited That's because it. it's a it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the process of making this new album, is there any particular memorable moment, something that stands out that you know you just brought brought joy to you when you're actually making the album? Well, it's always happiness because the, the world is very serious. And the music is very serious. And then everything that, that comes out has to be logical because we don't have to do nursery rhyme and everything is reality. So it's, it's, it's fun and before fun, it's coming from the roots. Mm -hmm. Reggae Center. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
I mean, somewhere within the album, you've also found the time to cover one of your good friends, Bob's Three Little Birds, alongside his son, Ziggy Marley. Yeah. Whose choice of song was that? And why was it that particular song, Three Little uh, Birds? You know, uh, I just figured that two, myself and Bob was really close. And he and I would, we used to carry certain messages and certain depth of music. So people always look to realer than metal, you know. Mm -hmm. So when I began in, um, in this music affair, um, I quit my name Metal. Like M A Y T A L S. The T A L, M A Y T A L, Metal. Mm. But, um, I lose one of my members and I just say, well, I'm going to call it Toots and Metals because people know that Toots, Toots is my nickname and a lot of people never know and when they find out they say, hey Toots and Metals, you know, <laughs> but my first name that I composed was Metal, means to say we, we just do good music, Metal, anything good is Metal. They don't have to be nothing erratic, but metal not mean. It's very hard you can hear somebody have my tone of voice. I can sing the way I, you know, I even try. But I try to sing like people sometimes, you know. But I so I, I figure I have different, different tone in, in my spirit. But um, it's pure happiness. Mm. Yeah, man. Mm. I mean, when you sort of think back to the days of 13 Brentford Road, which was, you know, one of the studios where you first started working from, what was it like back then? Because, you know, I can sort of imagine that it was a musical hotbed of, you know, you had the Wailers, you had yourself. There were so many other greats back then. What memories does it bring back back to you now? You know, I never really started um, Brentford Road, 14 Brentford Road, no. Most of us start at um, Iron Street. Iron Street, and then as you asked me before, you said, where should I pick that song from, Bob? Mm. Because that's one of my favorite songs too, that Bob wrote. Okay. And then I asked Ziggy if he can sing it with me. He said, yeah, man, yes, uncle. Uh, they become my nephew, and I'm become their uncle. Right, okay. Um, yeah. They called me uncle, and I called him nephew. So, <laughs> man, Bob was like you know, brothers, you know, so. The spirit, so I, I just picked that song mm. because um, one of my favorite songs, mm. and I did it and did it. And, and, and Ziggy do a good job on it, and all the rest of family from the Mardi family they rejoice and feel good about it, too. Mm. and my family too. Yeah, mm. Mm. now one other thing that I wanted to ask you about was you are credited as the first person to actually use the word reggae in a song title. What do you have to say about that? Well, I did it, but I never knew I was going to, I never planned it really. And I, I never knew it was going to be like this in this time. Everybody want to sing reggae, they want to know about reggae. And um, reggae, the word is coming from, you know, uh, is a is a slang in Jamaica. When the girl not looking, girls not looking so good, you, you call her reggae. And then they say the same thing to us. If they don't like the guy, they, oh leave the guy, man. It's reggae. You know? so <laughs> it's just a slang coming from that time. And then this beat start to play. Some great musicians in Jamaica start start the beat, and then. Some people used to call it blue beat or boogie beat, and it's just like a slip. Me and my two friends, Jerry Matthias and Relly Garden, he really got in there, but Jerry Matthias still living in New York. And then we we, put, we go together in um, practicing, and that word just comes up. That word just comes up. Mm. And, um, we put it into the music. Then when people come from the tourists or Europe, or anywhere, uh, America they come from, they said they really appreciate to know that the music that we play called reggae. Nobody didn't know what they called it. And so until I say, let's do the reggae. And then 
you know, it was a great, it was a great moment, and for people today to to recognize our music and ska reggae, and it's happened that is I coined the word reggae in my in in my song, so mm. it's cool. Mm. One of the things that I've sort of noticed or read about in the press in recent sort of times is that people are saying that Jamaica needs to take back reggae. But what do you have to feel? What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Because, you know, some people sort of say that, you know, people from overseas are now sort of like making reggae their own and reggae should stay Jamaican. What do you feel about that? Well, um, um, I don't know about take back reggae from where. <laughs> this, this is the question. That's why I asked the question. I don't know what's reggae, but reggae never got away. If you, I'm here, I'm reggae. And a lot of all the Jamaican artists are reggae also, you know, so. Exactly, so. Um, I don't think it's gone away. People just don't, not pay enough mind um, to sing reggae, uh, Jamaica. They, they believe they, they learn a lot, but they don't, they never, you can't stop learning about reggae. Mm. And uh, it, it's hard for them to, to do it. That to show you that reggae is very hard, hard music to do. You have to have heart, soul, and, 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 and power. Mm. Because reggae music is not just reggae. It have to have, you have soul, you have energy, you have reasoning, you know. You have to reason in, in the song. You always have to be powerful and, and strong, you know? True, true. So, to me, reggae never gone nowhere. Mm. People just have to know where reggae is coming from. And um, we, we, we lost a lot of great people, not just Babylon, a lot of great singers in Jamaica that they used to record more reggae. The youths of today, they were called in less reggae, you know, so for me reggae never gone away. I'm still here and my audience is there waiting to see me. Of course, mm -hmm. of course. Back in 1980, I think it was, you recorded an album which was recorded in the UK called Toots Live. Do you have any memories of that particular event? Yeah, yeah man. Um, I used to work with um, Highland Record and Chris Blackwell um, planned, us, planned to let us do this live show in um, uh, where, where the Queen is again? In London. Yeah, but there are places that we, we went to do this show. Okay. Uh, maybe back before you're gone, I, will, I, I can tell you. Um, but we, we've been there. And we rehearse, and we do the show, everything video, recorded, and in 12 o'clock a day, it sell over 50,000, uh, I don't know, it was, it was, it's called Amasimit Pali. Okay. In, in London, we went to Amasimit Pali, yeah. yeah. And that's where it, that was happened, you know, mm. that was done there. And I think that there was an attempt to try to put that album into the Guinness Book of Records yes. for being the was, the yeah. fastest released live yeah. album. Yeah, it was, yeah. It is, and um, no one has never done it like that. No. <laughs> Well, the reason why I ask you that question is that my hometown is a small city called Leicester, and it was actually in, in yeah. it was actually in Leicester where I think that some of the pressing took place yes. for that particular album. That's true. That's true. Mm. Yeah, man. Okay. Now, recently, um, you've also donated a guitar from one of your first tours, overseas tours, to the museum here in Jamaica. Mm. Let's talk to the people about that. Well, uh, I did it because it's very important unnecessary to to do and then people have to take a look at that and uh, and i wish uh, many more artists could um doing it a present like that and for his is all about reggae mm. and the standard the standard the standard of reggae to bring people to the to the altar and then 
everyone just germinate. Right, okay. <laughs> and, and, and then the music is just a music that people will never forget. So that's what it is. Mm. Yeah. I think that the, the history of the music is too deep enough, mm. so it can't be forgotten. Generations to come are still going to be listening they to the, the music. music. Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah. yeah. yeah, man. yeah man. Well, look. We really give thanks for your time today. It's truly an honour and a blessing for all the Reggae Interviews team to come and just sit down and just learn a little bit more about this brand new album. And I want to just ask you a closing message to all the people that have supported Toots and Reggae and Jamaican music across the world. Yeah, people who support Reggae, I wouldn't say people who support Reggae because a lot of the whole Jamaican support Reggae. <laughs> And the whole America support me. <laughs> the whole of Europe support me. Everybody full of support me. But I want the young people them to gravitate on a lot of good reggae music and to help keep it rising high. High, 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 high. Because that's, that, that's what I'm here to do. To uplift people with, with the words of my song and my, and my music and to make things happy and to let Jia work in mysterious ways. He's one just to perform. He plants his foot upon the sea and he rose upon the storm. Yeah. So our music is, is like storm. Storm in the world, but that gonna hurt anyone. Make people rejoice and be strong. Yeah, man. Toots, once again, we give thanks for your time today. One love. Yeah, man, this is love. It's more than one love. One love, you can start with one love, but you're going to develop to enough love. <laughs> enough love every time. Yeah, man. Reggae interviews. Word, sound, power.